I, I don't have to spend a whole lot of time on training. I don't have to deal with them not understanding workplace issues. I don't have to deal with the kid on the cell phone or calling in sick because he wants to go to the beach, go to the beach, beach or whatever. These, you know, older workers yep. are more dependable as reported by employers. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you add up all those factors and you just have a lot less. You know, I saw one statistic that said, hey, the, the good news is the employment gap between uh, white youth and, and youth of color mm-hmm. uh, has narrowed as it, as it relates to youth employment. The bad news is it's because whites have gone down more than, than any other group. And it only stands to reason there were more white kids working as the job market turned and those other factors came into place. It affected mm-hmm. the workforce kind of, even if it affected it equally, it means it affected white youth more. So the bad news is it's more... It, it's it the 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 employment gap for teens uh, by race has closed, but it's closed for a bad reason. It's because it's because it, it not because uh, um, kids of color of, of have increased their their uh, uh, level of of participations because unfortunately whites white youth have have not been able to get into the job market. Wow, so. You know, and then you add in the other factor, too, uh, that we're hearing about, and I was just talking to uh, Miss Jeannie Hebert, who heads up the Black Soul Valley Chamber of Commerce, mm-hmm. is the rise in minimum wage. Yeah, that you know, $15 and, an hour is going yeah, up. You know, getting up there, right? So we're, we're raising it up, and, and we're at the point now where, um, you know, it, it is starting to, to, you know, probably affect the, a number of teens. I mean, we hear it anecdotally, mm-hmm. um, but you do wonder how much it's, it, it, it really is factoring in in terms of the numbers. So, um, you know, you get all that stuff. But I'm really curious to know about this. You know, they say the robotics and technology is really going to be in the next 10 years. They've already uh, started rolling out and testing out. Uh, it's a robot called K5 that's built by Droid, and they it's to replace security guards in the hotel. I mean, in the malls. Hmm. And uh, so they tested out in a few malls, and um, it actually, you know, kids greeted the thing called K5, and they tried to make it, like, you know, the same height as, like, average five-year-olds in kindergarten, so it looks friendly. And um, but it doesn't have like you know the friendly greeting facial feature, so they're working on making the robot look more uh, human friendly. friendly. And um, so the robot had an incident where like it, you know, was leaving away from the kids, and it, you know, his will screeched off, and it scared the kids, and they said, "Oh, it's a monster!" And they ran, and <laughs> it caused panic in the, you know, in the, in the um, mall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yes. but that's coming. K five, and now, uh, you know, at some point you get you couple. So you couple the technology. Mm-hmm. With the rise in minimum wage, people are feeling like there's – so there's some theories out there. And I'm sure if you go to the Internet and Google this, I'm sure you can find this. It might be a conspiracy theory or whatever. I don't know if it's true. I'm not, I, I'm not disseminating it as gospel here. But there's a theory that there are some industries that are watching the, the rise in minimum wage, fast food being probably the prime ones, uh, and some of the larger, like McDonald's or whatever um, – that are that are suggesting that there's a tipping point about fourteen to fifteen dollars an hour where it becomes more economical to invest in the robotic hamburger makers. So you know your cooks, your cook staff, and all that um, might be replaced if they get to a certain point where that tipping point and they and it's been suggested to me that um, that tipping point is about fourteen and a half dollars something like that. So as we get closer to that with with the minimum wage. It'll be interesting to see if that does come to fruition. But you, you know, you you look at a variety of of industries. Can you can you off the top of your head? Can you think of some industries affected by technology? Um, I would say like most like warehouses are business. Like the lines are usually animated. I mean, automated now by uh, like the stores, the like stores, the big yeah. box, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like uh, you maybe have uh, I think like Amazon. Most of that stuff is all oh, you know, yeah. machines that just uh, pumps out you know scan codes. You used to have people pack up and they've the got uh, they've got robots picking the orders now at the warehouse. Exactly. Yeah. They, you know, and they'll they, be and they'll be delivered by droids. The new drones. Drones. That's drones. it. I said droids. Drones. Droid. But they are droid drones. Droid droids. Yeah. Same technology. <laughs> same thing. I had a vision of R two D two bringing me my latest book. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Here is your book, Joe. My friend Enjoy. Um, just purchased. A, I think they call it Alexa from Amazon, and you know, it's like the speaker you can yeah. speak to and ask it any question. But my only thing was, you know. Because it's actively listening for your voice to 
to ask a question. So I asked him if he's worried about, you know, him and his brother's conversations just oh, being picked getting picked up. up. Yeah. yeah. It's somebody, well, you know what? You know, I mean, you've got laptops with cameras and stuff, and there have been times where there have been cases where, like, a school official who is, you know, obviously acting outside of the boundaries of his job has turned on that camera remotely and, like, spied on kids. Wow. Mm-hmm. Sure. No bueno. No good. Right, Sean? <laughs> Sean, have you heard about Yeah, right. I, I mean, this is so can you imagine someone could probably hack into the Alexa system, right? And then and then do what you're saying. Turn on the microphone. And sure. then all of a sudden you, you're getting, you know. Hear all your intimate conversations between you and your spouse. Sean, can we get a Sean a shot of Sean's shirt? <laughs> Sean, what's what's the big bite bag? What is that about? That's my brother's company. <laughs> well what Sorry. tell us tell us about bite bag. Oh, geez. Well, here, take one. I wonder why you've been so quiet. Joe, I'm going to share the mic with you. Okay. So tell us about Bite Bag. So as you know, my brother lives in California. Can we, can we, can we get a shot of the logo? Actually, there's a better one on the back. Nice. Uh, so he lives in California, a uh, big surfer, avid surfer out there, and a lot of the surfing spots are, are very remote, very away from hospitals. Oh, and you need a bite bag. So he developed a, <laughs> created a patent for a, uh, a bag, like a very small, like first response like a trauma kit that can attach right to your anklet where your uh, surfboard goes to. And it's I'm got, thinking it's though, got if you got, stuff. if you got bit, it's, it's you not, you might need it's more than like, a bag. Or maybe like, they bite the bag away. So it's not like, oh, I've, you know, I, I got bit by a shark, but I put this thing on it. So I'm just going to go home. It's, it's enough to like help, help reduce the risk of what's dying, in the, what's in the satchel here? Do we have uh because uh, I, I created one called the safety satchel. <laughs> um, it, 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 it attached to your back, though. It might so, have been less. So it's got enough to wrap the wound. So it's got a um, some uh, medical grade, that rubber kind of stretchy stuff yeah. and gauze padding. Uh, very minimal, but enough to, you know, reduce and stop bleeding on your way to the hospital. Because a lot of these places aren't, you know, 10 minutes down the road. There's a hospital there. You have to travel. So it's really just like a trauma kit. Trauma kit, yep. Wow, pretty amazing stuff. So, yeah. And that, he started this, as and now it's his company and all that? Well, he's actually still in the process of starting it. I think his, his patent's finally gone through, and he's Well, he's I hope so, because now things. our listeners are out there. They're running out there. You know, they're <laughs> going to create the uh, – what could we come out with for pouch? What, what would be a good word for, you know, like the performance pouch or something? What are we, we going to call it? The, <laughs> I like don't a know. new fanny pack or something. There you go. <laughs> You've been yeah, wanting gotta, to bring the you fanny got bike pack bag. Back. You got to come up with something that has two letters that, that are the same. We need the alliteration. <laughs> Maybe someone will just buy his patent off him. Hey, that's a good There pitch. you go. One All of these right, big, one it. of these robotic just, companies, yeah. maybe. And we're back. Welcome to the Working Lunch with Jeff Turgeon and Joe and Queasy here today. Nice, nicely done, sir. You know, I was, uh, I was, I w- we're calling into uh, Lon Ross, the program manager now, and uh, you know, I hadn't noticed that the break had ended, and you were right there, <laughs> you had my back. Hey, you know who's missing today? Does anyone remember who's missing? No, no one wants Jonathan, to. Jonathan Cortez. Jonathan Cortez, second month out. I'm starting to question his commitment. He's surfing. Hey, He's out surfing. <laughs> I wonder if we want to. Are, are we? Should we vote on whether he comes back or? How's He's a good guy. Work? He'll have a seat back next month. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So are we set with uh, Lauren Ross? Lauren, can you hear us? We're gonna we're gonna dial a few buttons here and see what we can do. Lauren, are you there yet? Until we get Lauren on the line, uh, just a quick note: our youth programming is coordinated through the YWIC, which is the Youth Works Investment um, Council, which includes uh, summer jobs, school-based programming, connecting activities, and contracted programs for at-risk youth developing work readiness skills. Very nice plug. Very nice plug. Lauren, can you hear us now? Oh, we've got we've got some technical assistance. Tell us a bit more about the YWIC while we're doing that. I know that that's a big uh, part of what we do here at the uh, Central Mass Workforce Investment Board. Uh, so YWIC, you have um, a lot of vendors who um, vendors who uh, provide uh, day-to-day uh, and direct service to youth uh, throughout the city of Worcester and uh, mostly th- plus the other 37 surrounding communities that uh, we support. And, and so um, that brings them together to talk about what's going on, to set up uh, joint programming, and really kind of address any maybe major gaps that exist mm-hmm. in, in those services. Lauren, are you with us? Oh, we're, still, we're still not able to get through to uh, Lauren Ross. She is the program manager at the Central Mass. Queasy, how's your falsetto? Do we want you to jump in as Lauren? Uh, is this <laughs> what? We're like 30 seconds from having on the line, guys. Just bear with us. Well, 
But for those we who may are, need to, we may need to move on. You know what? We're gonna move. On. Why don't you tell Lauren we're gonna go ahead and just catch up with her next month? Okay. Um, we know where her desk is, so we will catch up with her next month. Since technically, so but we have something else. There's a new feature, Joe. You're gonna be interested about this. A new feature that we're bringing to the show. Sean, as you know, uh, as you know, over the years, uh, we've come up with a number of different. You know, you got Shark Tank and those others where mm-hmm. new, new, new project ideas are out there, new uh, services, um, new, uh, uh, new products, right? Well, I've got a concept. So we're we're gonna create a segment called, you know, like the next big idea. Okay. We don't have the we, you know, we don't have the intro for it. We're gonna create an intro for it. That that's that's upcoming trends. Yeah, no, it's like the next big idea, and 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 it's kind of a reverse Shark Tank. We're gonna give away an idea to the community for someone to run with. Aren't so, they working on a new innovative hub downtown? Mm-hmm. So the folks over at the Innovation Center, yes, mm-hmm. exactly, or Technicopia, or I just saw another one, a makerspace out on Stafford Street. Any one of these folks, you can run with this idea, okay? So, Shauna, are you, are you, can, you, can you maybe just kind of a little beatbox action for the next big idea, right? <laughs> uh, boom, 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 boom. There you go. <laughs> the next big, big idea, idea brought to you by Nabisco. Actually, we can't do that because we're a nonprofit uh, radio here, right? Our underwriters. Under the next big idea is underwritten by Nabisco. There you go. Bringing good biscuits to life. All right, so here we go. So uh, here's the next big idea. So you you've got very popular right now. You've got those obstacle course races like Tough Mudder and mm-hmm. Spartan, right? People want you've got the X Games. CrossFit. People workouts. just don't want to ride their bike and or or watch people ride their bike in a race anymore. They want them doing flips and stuff, right? And you got you know like. Like uh, much more aggression out there, like much more, right? yeah. Like, like, can, you know what I'm saying? Like, like the society right now, much more aggressive, much more extreme, right? Who's the fit is of the fit? Exactly. You've got all these things right now, people. So I've I'm, I've created a new concept mm-hmm. for a new. I guess you'd call it a sport. Maybe it's a game. Uh, it's an it's an event that I think you could you could replicate around the the world. Uh, and it would be like, it's like the guy coming up, the first guy that came up with like the Spartan race, he was like, Hey, you know, we'll have people run, but we'll also have them like lift things and run, jump over things. And you know, all these crazy obstacles, right? Someone was like, wow, that's extreme. That's crazy. Yeah. And then people were like, yeah, let's do it. Here's my idea. Here's the next big idea. Big idea. For <laughs> anyone, anyone to run with, you just need to, you do need to credit me with, with the, with the creation of the idea. If you run with this, it's called most extreme king of the hill all right so let me share with you the con- and i actually you know queasy has been working on a logo i think we, i think our <laughs> graphics department needs to needs to needs to maybe we got to work on this uh, you know that's not quite is the peace symbol part doesn't really go with the whole <laughs> extreme thing but you get it, you we're, we're working on it we're working it's a work in progress most extreme you, you want me to lay this on you sean king of the hill so you know the game King of the Hill. Mm-hmm. So here's our twist on it. You get one of those, you know those big, those big dirt piles at a construction site. So it's about 30 feet high by about, I don't know, maybe 150 feet around. It's like a huge mound, basically, of dirt, right? And usually this, after a while, grass grows on it. Mm-hmm. So you get it good and prepped like that. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a, just a huge, small hill, mound or whatever. Very steep. Huge, yep. small hill. Right? <laughs> yes. Huge, small hill. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's. It's kind of in a contained area, right? And you get teams of like five or six people, and they all start at st- around the base of the hill. Okay. And when the whistle goes off, they all try to obviously run to the top. And then you probably have like each heat would be about like 10 minutes or 15 minutes, and it's king of the hill, extreme style king of the hill. I don't. I think you know what you do is probably put some sort of like those like round things, those soft round things on the hands, almost like boxing gloves, kinda. So they can't. Dig so you them. can't like punch people or whatever. But it's contact. There's some contact here. There'll be rules around contact. Mm-hmm. You're not trying to hurt anybody. At the same time, it's it's physical. I mean, it's extreme. Sign it's the most waiver, extreme. people. Sign the waiver. It's you got to sign the waiver. <laughs> it's most extreme, King of the Hill. It's not like well, kind of. It's most extreme, King of the Hill, right? So. So when the, when the final whistle goes off, each zone of the hill mm-hmm. from top to bottom, the top cone, that's like your 30-point your zone. Then, like, the next ring would be, like, 
10 points, your next one will like five points, and then like the two point zone. And if you at any time fall below this like bottom ring, you're just out. Okay. So your goal is to push them out of that ring to get it. So it's almost like sumo wrestling meets king of the meets the hill, right? And so and I'm, I'm envisioning the teams would all have themes. So what would you, what, like, like you'd come dressed as Vikings or something, you know? So This is Sparta! <laughs> there you go. Quisi, is that, you'd be like, you'd be like the Spartan theme? Uh, yeah, that's my high school mascot. <laughs> John, what, what, what? I'd want to be on Quisi's team. I want to be this. But if I had to pick one, uh, Ninja Turtles. Oh, Ninja Turtles. One. Yeah, see? So you get it. So you'd all, so the whistle goes off, and then, you know, you do your heat, and then, like, the winners would kind of face off or something. It'd be like a tournament. Most have a, extreme. Have to some don't you teammates. think actually this could work? <laughs> I don't know. I think people would get too aggressive. Well, we need to. Yeah, we need to. We need to create a way to to make sure it, there's a safety factor. Again, I'm thinking if you if it's you falling down that hill. Yeah, I would have team <laughs> teammates designate to well, know, be, push other be, people down there'd the hill. Well, there'd be there'd be a lot of foam <laughs> at the bottom of the hill or foam ball pit moat or something. But we, we need to. Yeah, we need to work on this. But if you can do. American ninja, you know, American ninja warrior, and fall twenty feet or whatever into water. We could, we can work on this. Yeah. It's not insurmountable. Uh, I was thinking my team might be the pirates. Oh, okay. But then you'd say, you yeah, a free thing of icy a pirate too. is like yeah. you're not on water. Like what? Yar. I think I need to rethink the theme. It's it. <laughs> being on land might not be our thing. Land Yar. pirates. Yar. Land pirates. That's a good name. Yeah. Yeah, the Western Mass Land Pirates. The Central Mass Land Pirates. That's going to be a nice ring to it. Yar. <laughs> yar, yar. Most extreme king of the hill. Of course, we won't have that perception if we wear the if we wear the eye patch. Right? It's going to ruin our... <laughs> we keep falling off the hill, we do. It's the eye patch. <laughs> yar. I'm surprised <laughs> nobody's picked that idea up yet. Should have gone with the Viking <laughs> theme. If we could get the phone, ring, the phone working, I better be ringing off the hook I, right now. You know... <laughs> Too bad that phone. No, I think Big investors call. You know, up. You, and we all know what's going to happen here. In three years from now, you're going to see NBC coming out with most extreme king. They're going to call it something else, but it'll basically be King of the Hill with a big off school trial. What you're finding? Well, no, of the it'll hill just be end. it'll just be King of the Hill. Like what what we're talking about. They'll figure out a way, to, and then you'll be like, oh, Turgeon, Jeff, he told Jeff me that a while ago. The next ago. big idea. So I am. This is the next big idea. All I ask is that if someone runs with it, they give me a call, give me some credit, and. Uh, it, you know what? I'll work on it with them if they want. If you want a partner in this, I'm looking for a partner on this. What do you think, Sean? I'm in. You're in. I have no financial backing, but I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a Viking costume we can we can share? Yes. Hey, we we so we did forget. Uh, uh, it's mailbag. Uh, actually, What's we're we're running out of time quick. Unless you want to do it real quick. Well, if we're if we're at that time, we're at that time. We're at that time. Yeah. Are we ready to start the closing song? Because usually we hear that in the background as we. I was just about to start it. All right, go for it. <laughs> hey, I saw a good time travel movie you might want to check out. It's, it's by the same, I think it's by the same company that did uh, Shaun of the Dead. Okay. Very funny. Very funny. Good stuff. Oh, I'll, I'll say bye. Everyone, we have, uh, <laughs> we have successfully, uh, successfully come through another hour of the working lunch. Hope you enjoyed it. I want to thank Queasy Foster for stepping on the other side of the microphone. Our co- uh, guest today, Joe Catroni. I uh, want to also thank Lauren Ross for trying to call in to us. We got an uh, and, of course, thank Jessica behind the camera for uh, for the cable channel, uh, Worcester Cable Channel, and, and Sean McGauley today being...